All right there, everyone. The petition to give Alex Jones White House press credentials and seat him right next to CNN's Jim Acosta has gotten over 50,000 signatures. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. By the way, if this is your first time here, a warm welcome to you. I post two videos a day analyzing current events in light of conservative trends. So let me encourage you to smack that bell and subscribe button. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers, and it'll be an absolute privilege to have you as one of them. All right, so this is a uh, follow-up video to one we did a couple of weeks back where we highlighted an official petition on the White House website. I'll link it down for you below, which is uh, aimed to grant Alex Jones full White House press credentials and seat him right next to CNN showboat Jim Acosta. Like I said, I'll, be, I'll provide a link below for you to sign the petition. I do believe you have to be a United States citizen. But if you're outside of the United States, go ahead and send out the link to your American acquaintances and urge them to sign it. At this point, only after a few weeks, the petition has garnered over 50,000 signatures. And if they get a total of 100,000 in the next couple of weeks, I think it's uh, December 17th, uh, then the White House does uh, generally respond to such petitions. This is a custom of the White House to issue a formal response to all petitions that reach over 100,000 signatures. Now, I have to say, I think this petition is a perfect way of framing our critique for CNN. For example, as we noted before in our other video, what precisely is the difference between the conspiracy theories peddled by CNN's 24-7 ramblings about the supposed Russian collusion with the Trump campaign and Trump's continued secret collusion with Putin and Russia on the one hand and any of the conspiracies put forward by Alex Jones on the other? What's the difference between the public antics of Jim Acosta in Washington, D.C. and those of Alex Jones when he recently stormed the Capitol building, right? Jones was accused by the mainstream media of being a showboat and a provocateur and the like. What the hell is Jim Acosta? Uh, you know, we thought, in fact, we should just call him Jim Acosta because that's all he is in the end. He's a rude, obnoxious grandstander whose sole job is to disrupt and mock and heckle the President of the United States, with the full support of CNN and, I might add, the entire so-called mainstream media, the corporatist, globalist, left-wing media. Keep in mind, too, that the very corporatist, globalist media conglomerates that cried foul when the White House revoked Jim Acosta's press pass actually applauded the coordinated deep platforming of Alex Jones' Infowars. So I think seating Jones right next to Acosta would underscore this duplicity and hypocrisy on the part of the media. At the very least, the public consideration of this petition, which I think Trump would actually have a lot of fun with, given how much he rightly detests Jim Acosta, but the uh, public consideration of this petition would highlight just what so many millions of Americans think about CNN and their so-called White House correspondent, who's in point of fact more their White House Acosta, right? The corporatist globalist media loves to paint itself as reporters of objective facts, completely untainted by any bias. I could still remember Don Lemon of CNN actually coming out and trying to argue that he has, he has a point of view, but he doesn't have a bias. He has a point of view, but he doesn't have a bias, to which we simply ask, uh, are you biased towards that point of view? <laughs> Regardless, we all know intuitively, if not explicitly, what cultural anthropologists that study media and media-based communication have long recognized. And that is that the media operates according to a process that's technically known as selectivity when it comes to what's actually presented as either news or entertainment. In other words, and again, I think we all know this, we sense it intuitively, but scholarship has certainly corroborated that intuition. In other words, the media simply does not depict the world around us in a simplistic and objective fashion. In fairness, I do think that some in the mainstream media actually believe that. They naively believe that they're, they're giving an independent reality, uh, communicated completely uncontaminated by their biases. I'm willing to at least give them the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, some Kool-Aid drinkers, I don't know what. The problem for them is anthropologists and media like uh, Mark Allen Peterson have long observed the problem for them is that this process of selectivity, 
This process of picking and choosing what constitutes news and what it means is anything but neutral and objective. To assume that one is merely mediating reality for the viewer simply overlooks the whole notion of whose perspective of reality, whose experience of the world is going to count as the empirical reality against which to evaluate other accounts, right? In other words, it's not so much a matter of whether events are happening all around us, right? It's a matter of articulation, of constructing an account of those things. And that account of what's happening in the world is always, always constructed by the reporter, always. There's a radical difference between the terms freedom fighters and rebel separatists, right? There's a radical difference between the term undocumented worker and illegal immigrant. And so when you look at the vocabulary of the mainstream media and its concepts and its symbols of representation, it is absolutely clear that they are operating from a thoroughly transnational, transcultural, left-wing, globalist perspective. And because Donald Trump is probably the single greatest threat to that globalist perspective on the world stage today, the mainstream media really does reconstruct reality in such a way that deliberately attempts to portray President Trump as an existential threat to our democracy and as unfit to be president. Trump really is as much of a threat to American democracy as is, say, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and is thus to be viewed and associated with Putin as much as possible, hence the Russian conspiracy, conspiracy theories. This is Jim Acosta's basic reporting perspective. He's not interested in reporting untainted facts. He's interested in reporting globalism, corporatism, left-wing activism in the form of all kinds of conspiracies. Well, in much the same way, Alex Jones is about reporting nationalism, populism, traditionalism. He too will underscore his analysis with conspiracies and the like, but ones, of course, that implicate the likes of corporatist globalists for whom Jim Acosta and CNN as a whole are major apologists and defenders. So if you think this through, who better to sit next to each other than polar media opposites? Every White House briefing would in fact turn into an explicit battle of information that is the whole rationale for InfoWars. Now that would be exciting indeed. So anyway, all this is to say that if you haven't already done so, make sure to sign that petition. I, I linked it below for you. Like I said, you have to be a U.S. citizen to sign it. So if you're outside of the U.S., go ahead and forward it to all of your American friends and colleagues. And let's see what we can do with this. We'll certainly be keeping our eyes on how things develop, but let's get to that 100,000 signatures as soon as possible. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our new online merchandise selection where you can get gear and apparel celebrating all things nationalist populist. And if you would, please click on our Patreon link below. Become a monthly supporter of this channel. As you know, we are uh, periodically demonetized by YouTube, and we can really use your help so we can continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.